Hello everyone. I hope you all have seen a previous video on how to export CloudWatch logs to Elasticsearch or OpenSearch and how we can query the logs and not only just query but add multiple log groups and see it. Now the issue with Elasticsearch is that first of all you have to spin up a cluster as you saw in the last video. The cluster can be a bit complex based on the amount of log groups you have and that can be costly because you are going to pay for compute which is a VM or a EC2 as well as for storage and the storage could be into gigabytes and then you will have to take care of indexing, managing the shards, replication as well as need to create a policy so that your cost doesn't increase. So what is the option? What is the alternate way of uh, querying the logs without the original cost, as well as you get the same features as you would get in an Elasticsearch? That is where today's video is going to talk to you on how you could use Athena, which is a AWS tool or a service that you can kind of query. Uh, it's a structured, semi-structured data as well. And that's what I'll go into detail on this video, how you could do it. So please like, subscribe, share the channel so that others can also benefit from cloud computing. Uh, drop in a comment if you have any questions or any other videos you want us to make. So this agenda, it's not going to be a long video, it's going to be a short one, wherein we'll go, go into the overview of Athena and S3 logs and the step-by-step -step instructions. So essentially, Athena is a serverless query service that will allow you to analyze data stored in Amazon S3 using standard SQL. Now why this is advantageous? Because in CloudWatch, you also have the option of exporting to S3 and that is something I will show later. Athena supports querying compressed data formats such as gzip file which can help not only in storage but also in performance and Athena is like uh, the S3 we all know it's a scalable object storage service where logs and other data they are stored in different formats. One can run SQL queries unstructured, semi-structured or unstructured data stored in S3 without needing to load or transform the data. Athena also helps in querying directly the complex logs and thus helping to retrieve valuable insights without decompressing the files manually. Now where it is very advantageous is you don't need to move this data to a database and that is some of the things that we constantly have to educate not only our customers but also a lot of the developers that cloud computing is different compared to the on-prem or traditional way of computing or technology wherein if you have the data persisted you don't need to necessarily move into a database. You could always query from the files directly itself. And that is where Athena is a very powerful service that can help you do that. Azure has similar services. Please drop in a comment if you want to look into Azure services that can do the same. But for now, let's focus on AWS. So that is what in this presentation, I'll walk you how you could query logs that are stored in S3. So now I'm here in the AWS console. This is the log group I'll show on how we could go about exporting to S3 and in turn query from Athena. So last video, if you remember, or we showed like how you can export to OpenSearch and this was the option. But if you see over here, there is another option on how you could export to S3 as well. So click on this option, leave the time frame default. Is This is optional. Now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and create an S3 bucket. This is where I'll come here. I'll create an S3 bucket and I'll just use it as YouTube logs and this is, I'm just going to be deleting it after this video. You could choose a bucket if you want the policy, but for now I'll skip it and you should block all public access. You shouldn't provide access. I don't need versioning, but ideally in a production environment, you should enable versioning. Tagging, of course, definitely have it. Definitely have customer CMK. Instead of AWS, uh, you could click on these advanced settings, see, but for the most part, just leave it as default. You should be good. And now click create bucket. Now I need to give this bucket the, the right permission as well for CloudWatch to write to it. So this is where I come over here, permission part, and in the policy, I need to provide the access. I could come here, I do a policy generator. So in here, what I'll do is I have the policy created, and this is something the policy would be available also in our blog. You could uh, feel free to get this policy from the blog, but this is what you would need to just ensure that uh, you have this policy. I'll remove these sets because they need to be unique for the most part. And that is where it's, it doesn't like duplicate SIDs and SIDs. The SIDs is just an identifier. You could uh, remove the principle, which in this case is logs, and I could provide action of uh, right condition to provide the source account so that it is only restricted for this account. That is where the security funding went away. And all this policy is going to be part of the blog. So you could check, get this policy from there and you don't have to type uh, it from here. So I, but right. So instead of this, I let me just go here and copy and put the policy that I have created. We didn't spend much of time, but the whole point is I'm not allowing public access and, and I'm only providing access to the cloud watch logs. So I hit save. And now if I go back here, I refresh this, I type YT. And if I give the prefix of CloudWatch, 
let's see so it exported the, the logs that are that from this particular cloud was logs to s3 it would export if i hadn't given this particular policy you could try it for yourself you will get an error that cloud wash logs to the dump permission but this is where after a few times the logs should start doing in and we'll we'll meet once the logs are there we're in the patch of policy but essentially what this policy is saying is cloud watch logs should be having access to this particular bucket and it shouldn't have any pub public access that other accesses should be denied like you see this is what the policy is saying these are some duplicate lines i can kind of this is saying for the security violation let me put a condition Okay, so now a few minutes have passed and if I come here, like you could see this is the logs that have been now exported to S3. This is where you see and these few logs have been exported. Now I come here, you see by default, the format is a gzip file. This is archive format that uh, we can kind of use to query the data. And Mr. Short, Athena can query gz format as well and that's what I'm going to show you in the next steps. So I come here now and I go to... Athena. I open a new tab, Athena, and this is the service that I was mentioning as part of the setup. And as you could see, you have these data sources created. As of now, there's only one data source. And what you, essentially what you'd be doing is you'd be creating a database here where your log will be stored. I wouldn't refer to the details of Athena because there's a lot of, there are a lot of documentations available on Athena. You could go and read AWS documentation as well. Uh, don't want to kind of state the obvious. This is something that is a niche area that it will benefit that is not there in the documentation. So let me show you how I, what are the steps to move about creating the, I need to first create a database and then I need to create the table to be able to query it. So let me show you that next steps. Okay. So I updated this policy wherein I added this. So now I wrote this query wherein I'll be creating a table. If it doesn't exist, the table name is going to be log application logs. This is the database I'll be uh, creating it. And this is what I have mentioned. This is the format and all this query is going to be in the blog as well. This is this, uh, the properties, just the index pattern I have given, which is stored as text file and the compression type I've given as gzip. Now here I've kept, I need to provide the ST location. So what I do, I'll come here and I choose this way i could also move one level up here and that is i could always go here give it just to cloudwatch specifically this particular uri so let me do that and i choose this uri now here i will yeah i need to i need to set up the uh, result in s3 so let me come here and give the s3 location but now i'll just choose this one and this is the i could give this option as well so this is it'll give the full permission which is fine you want you can encrypt it i'm fine this is just a video and this is updated now i should come back here in the editor and i should be able to have the run button enabled now let me try running it so the, first i need to create a log database so let me get this database created so there you go so now if i uh, the query is successful if i refresh this this is the table I need to first choose the database and this is where I'll see the table created with these values over here. Now, if I want, I should be able to go to the next step and let me run this again. So now I should see here the log database is created. Now I should be able to run this query. So the output, it does take some time. It takes around 10 seconds because of the amount of data I'm trying to fetch. Now this is a SQL like syntax and you want, you could reduce the number of rows you're coming up. A lot of this is already documented. You could go ahead and read the documentation. But if I run this query, you could see that this is the data it will return to me in 10 seconds. And I'll be able to check the, in a typical format, like how I would go to open search and be able to query the logs. And you see, this is a nice tabular format. It provides me the purpose of being able to not only just export to S3, which is a more cost effective option compared to CloudWatch, but also be able to query similar to how I do in a database. So this is the, you see this query that is there, where I have the column names that I had provided earlier. And uh, like, this is where you see, this is the timestamp ISO long date. And if I query this as the output, it does take some time. It takes around 10 seconds because of the amount of data I'm trying to fetch. Now this is a SQL like syntax and you want, you could reduce the number of rows you're coming up. A lot of this is already documented. You could go ahead and read the documentation. But if I run this query, you could see that this is the data it will return to me in 10 seconds and I'll be able to check the in a typical format, like how I would go to open search and be able to query the logs. And you see, this is a nice tabular format and it provides me the purpose of being able to not only just export to S3, which is a more cost effective option compared to CloudWatch, but also be able to query similar to how I do in a database. The 
because the output it does take some time. It takes around 10 seconds because of the amount of data I'm trying to fetch. Now, this is a SQL-like syntax, and you want, you could reduce the, the number of rows you're coming up. A lot of this is already documented. You could go ahead and read the documentation. But if I run this query, you could see that this is the data it will return to me in 10 seconds, and i will be able to check the, in a typical format, like how I would go to open search and be able to query the logs. And you see, this is a nice tabular format, provide me the purpose of being able to not only just export to S3, which is a more cost-effective option compared to CloudWatch, but also be able to query similar to how I do in a database. So with this, I hope this provides good information on how you could go about using CloudWatch and S3 along with Athena to query the logs from your application. So again, please share and like this video and let us know in comments if any questions or issues you run into. Thank you. Have a good day.